Hey everyone, and welcome to Life on Point. My name is Darren. I'm one of the pastors at Connected Point Church. Along with me is Pastor Chris Vault, lead pastor at Connected Point Church. Hey, do us a huge favor. Give us a thumbs up, like us, follow us, depending on what platform you use to listen or watch this, this podcast. Uh, be sure to follow us, share us, do, do us a big favor and share it, share this so we can get this content out everywhere. The more we can get this out, the more the, the, more the analytics love us, the more uh, the more people will see this. And that would be awesome if you could help us out in that way. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a, an expression, not necessarily a biblical uh, phrasing, though it is biblical. Um, but whenever I'm, whenever I have a little thing I do, I guess, during the week is I listen to several different podcasts and some of those are messages. And there's an expression and, and it's a particular favorite of one particular <laughs> pastor that I know. He's sitting beside me and he says that if he goes a week without saying it, it's actually kind of impressive. He's, he has said it as many as I'm his, I'm, 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 I'm on the media team. So yeah. we count, you count sometimes. He said it six times in one message once. And uh, that was his record. He hadn't topped it yet. Three's is his, usually his limit, but six was his biggest one. But about once a week, he'll say this expression. It's, and it's not the only one. It's used a lot. And it's God is on the throne. And, <laughs> and so, I mean, sometimes we can say things like that. And, I'll, and so I, I remember thinking clearly uh, one time you said, I'm like, I wonder how many people even know what he means. I mean, I think we know what it means. Right. And I would I hope people know what it means when you go, or it's just wasted words. <laughs> But that's what preachers do, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and then and then you guys back in the media room with some of your teenage qualities. We yeah, there's clearly en- teenage qualities enjoy, there. Uh, yeah. Enjoy that phrase a little too much. So, we do. So was my six times like over the three services? No, no, it was in one. It, it was, was in, in one, one sermon? message. It was. Okay. It was. <laughs> yeah, because you did it in your. You came in. It happened to be one of those times where you came in and ex- got really excited, and so you said it twice, and then during your prayer. You did it, and then you did it a couple times during your messes and your closing prayer. You did it, so oh wow! It was yeah. just one of those days. It was one of those days. God was on the throne that day, Always. as He is every day. Always. That's kind of what we're going to talk about. Exactly, <laughs> we're going to unpack that that expression. I know when you look it up, uh, the uh, and when I think of it, I think of God's eternity. That's yeah. what I think about as much as anything. I know there's a whole lot there, uh, and that's uh, the expression El uh, El Olam. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and it also talks about, you know, with God's eternity to me, I always look at it in the contrastingness, uh, the contrast of man's, uh, um, ephemeralness. Uh, so the eternal versus the ephemeral, um, we're ephemeral. In other words, we're, we're like grass as the Bible says, we're, Mm -hmm. we're here today, gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And and, and we change, we adapt, we die. Yeah. And so, and it's like, and we're God's in God's, uh, uh, the definition when you look at God, it's like these things are are just moments. Or it, I don't even know if you use the word moments. For us, we try to put earthly words to describe this, but we can't. And so today, if we could, for people, would love to like unfold that that idea of God on the throne, and in fact, not just on the throne, but He is always on the throne. Right. Yeah. You know, and for me, when I think of the passage or the passages in Scripture that describe Him uh, being in that position on the throne. Jesus now sitting at his right hand, yep. um, which is another symbol on our behalf, right? Yep. Yes, it's, it's, it's a metaphor. It's yep. speaking metaphorically here or symbolically. The, the power, the right hand, the the, uh, the <clears throat> arm, of, the power of God. Yeah, yeah. And, and so when, when we talk about when I'm saying God is on the throne, I am calling our attention back to the fact that God is supreme. Yep. He's in authority. And so when I think of him being on the throne, the word that comes to mind is authority. Mm. That God is in His supreme position. Um, yep. This really grabbed me uh, when we came out of 2020, or while we were going in. Just mm-hmm. came back, opened our building up after we were shut down for COVID, um, and we did a whole year of preaching through the Book of Isaiah. Yep, and we talked about rising above the chaos. Um, and when when you think about that, um, I remember the one tagline that. I felt like the Lord gave me that I never could get past and still haven't in a uh, future writing project that, that I have uh, diagrammed out if we ever get to it will be along this line. But what kept coming to my mind was is, is our world was shaking. Mm-hmm. The whole world was falling apart seemingly. It was so much fear and anger and blaming this one or that yep. one. And, 
and, and you know, and all the controversy and, uh, but the Holy Spirit just kept reminding me as we read the book of Isaiah, when our world is shaking, God isn't. That's he right. is still seated. You want to say it? On the throne. <laughs> he's still seated in his position of authority. Yep. He's strong. He's stable. He's secure. He knows what he's up to. He's sovereign. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of those attributes, I believe, today. So, Yeah, I know you referred to um, to Isaiah. Um, and I know whenever when I first started doing, uh, looking through some scriptures about this particular um, subject matter, I, I did end up... Um, Ironically, in uh, Psalms, I know you hit Psalms a little bit here in a minute. Mine was uh, when I looked at a little bit was Psalm ninety, mm. um, and that that was an interesting one because it was actually written by Moses. Right. It's like most people when we think of the book, we Psalm, think of the we Psalm, think of we think of David almost yeah. exclusively. But that one specifically says it Psalm was written Moses. by Moses, right. and it's interesting because he talks about it when it opens up. It says, "Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth, or ever." Or ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, yes. you are God. Right. And it's interesting because whenever you dive into that entire uh, psalm, you had to remember uh, pretty much the atmosphere that, that Moses found himself in. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was toward the, right before they go into promise, and he's you know he's they've been through this wilderness stage mm-hmm. for a really long time. Right. Uh, seen a lot of miraculous things, but also seen some terrible things. Exactly. And this is going to sound crazy, but at this point, death was a normal thing for him to see. Well, sure. Over 1.2 million of his brethren had died by this point in, uh, in, in their travels through the wilderness. Right. So they were literally burying 60 a day. That's in. Yeah, it's insane. We think about the think the, about the amount of death that Over was surrounding those 40 him. Years, right. And so, and in, but despite all that, and he's looking out and trying to lead these people. And uh, and when we go down to verse 12, it says, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Right. And so, man, it's like, so here, in, he, God is eternal, right? He's been there since the foundations of the earth, and he'll be there whenever all things are done, right? right. He's always going to be here. And it's like, and so everything that we do is just, is just a breath of air, man. It's just here, mm-hmm. and then it's gone. I know this is a real deep and heavy subject matter, but it is. Well, the scripture says our life is but a vapor. It's, it's a vapor. When you compare it to eternity. Yeah. So whenever I'm reading through, uh, there, there, are, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of references to, to this idea of who God is. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and in general, it's funny how, it, it, like you were saying earlier, it's like it seems like it goes two paths. It's either um, we lean on God uh, because we know he's always going to be there. And that's, I know that's the path that you're going to take. It's like he is always there. Right. It's like when everything else is failing, when our wisdom fails, when our, when our resources fail, whenever our friends fail, our families fail, when everything fails, right. God's there. Right. Right. And then there's the other side of that from where Moses came from. It's like, man, looking around me, I've made a mess, all right? Mm-hmm. And, and our sins have created this, what I'm looking at. Right. And, and we're going to face judgment one day. And, uh, and, and, and I hope and I pray that through all of this that you can look upon me, your servant, and say, well done, my, 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 my faithful servant, right? Right. And, uh, and so, so I know whenever I like to say, when I look at it, I'm always looking at that eternal aspect of God. And I know with you going into uh, – uh, I think you said Psalms 93 is where you're going to jump mm-hmm. in. Yeah, I love this passage, Psalm 93, the first two verses here. Yep. Um, David declaring this about the Lord. He says, the Lord reigns. Yep. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed or enveloped in strength. The world is firmly established. I love that. We'll, we'll break this down. He says, it cannot be shaken. Mm-hmm. Your throne has been established from the beginning. You are right, from eternity, right. yeah. which kind of goes along with what yeah. you read from Moses, yep. you know, talking about eternity to eternity, right? Or everlasting to everlasting. So here mm-hmm. the psalmist is also declaring that God's throne, his position of authority, his position itself, the whole totality of God is established forever. That's right. There, there's never been a time where he wasn't. That's right. Right. And one of the beautiful things about the study of God is since there was never a time he wasn't, and there will never be a time that he is not, it's, it, there was never a time when he was young. Yeah. 
there will never be a time when he's owed. We can't understand no. that in our finite minds, right? Or, or you know, we we can't understand he's infinite. We're fine. We can't grasp that. There's never a time when he matured. There's never a time when he will degree degrace, right? right. Um, he is. He established firmly, and then he even says, "Look at the world." Yeah. He says the world is firmly established and it cannot be shaken. And then he goes on to the throne because how often do we take confidence in the world? When we say, well, you know, the world's going to keep turning, yeah. you know, it's going to keep rotating. We're going to see the sunrise tomorrow and then set, to, set tomorrow evening. Maybe there'll be a moon. We know the sky will be black stars. Then the next day's coming. We know there's four seasons coming, right? I mean, these establishments yep. and we get to where, we go through every day without really thinking too much about, hey, where are we at in this 365-day cycle around mm -hmm. the orbit? Where are we at in the turn of the axis at this moment? We don't even think about it because it's established, right? Right. In that same mindset, he says, that's how we ought to be viewing God. This God who is robed in his majesty and he's robed in strength, the God who put all this into play, how much more should we be thinking about his position of stability, strength, um, and uh, it, just the fact that he is established? Yeah, like you said um, early, the, the throne is literally a symbol of his authority. Yeah, and authority. It's it's interesting that David uh, was the one we just read from, and then Moses being the other, um, both great men of God that God used and did mm -hmm. great amazing things for me, but they also created a lot of headache for themselves because sure. <laughs> they were very frail. And that's what you're seeing. You're seeing two very powerful men in, in the scope that they were living in. David at that time was one of the most powerful men in the world and one of the most renowned men to this day. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. think about it, how many thousands of years ago this was Moses, same thing. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, he was a very powerful man. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and yet, and they had great authority, and but and it's I'm, you know at some point or another they that authority got misplaced right, right. And, and they and they begin to see themselves a little high, mm -hmm. and then that's usually when things began to, to to crumble around them a little bit. Right, and it's kind of like we been we did a study recently uh, in church uh, in the message series about Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. and though these men are, weren't Nebuchadnezzar by no stretch of the imagination, it it, it took them a moment of of of, of a very looking at their morality, at their who their humanity, and going, you know, humble, I humble, humble. am nothing compared to you. Right. I have authority, but you are the author the of all the authority. Right. Yeah, and so that is, and I think uh, the expression you use again is God is infinite. I mean, He is, He is, He is eternal. He is there from the beginning, and He will be there until the end, and He is unchangeable. And that is, it is hard. Like I said, you can't wrap your mind around it. No, but I love what you were you were hitting on to a little bit. And I think this is important for everyone who's listening or watching. Uh, I think this is important for all of us. We are not God. We and we got to remember that sometimes. Sometimes we, you know, in the old saying back in Kentucky, right, we get too big for our, our own bridges. bridges. So, yep. uh, <laughs> but we're not God. We're not in control, even though we think we've got it all under control. And we are fallen individuals. We're sinful. And, no, and the best of us, I mean, the Bible says there was not a meeker man on the planet other than Jesus Christ, other than Moses, right? I mean, right. Moses is next to Jesus. We know the Bible says there's not another man given the testimony of being someone after the heart of God that David was. Yeah. Yet both of them were fallen. That's right. Both of those were sinful. And, and we need to, first of all, remember God is holy, sinless. We're not. We're sinful creatures. The best of us, we're going to fall sometimes. We're going to make a mess Here's the thing. When that happens, you have two perspectives to view God and your situation. One of them is you can take the pessimist row. You can become very pessimistic. You can become very negative. And it's like, God, where were you? And you can blame God for the mess you created. And yep. we see this happen all the time. All the time. Yep. People blaming God for their mistakes and their messes or blaming God because we live in a cursed world and a sinful world. Well, where did that originate? It wasn't God's failure in the garden. No. It was mankind's garden. And ever since then, we've made a mess. God gets the blame. You're not going to get very far with that. You're going to stay frustrated. At some point, you're going to have to be humble to turn around and take responsibility, or, or you're not going to get victory in that area. Mm. 
The other view, and this is the view I believe we are seeing from Moses, and we're seeing from David, and we see from Daniel. We saw it in Daniel. We see it from all the men and women of faith over the generations when we study scriptures, and that is the world is messed up. And maybe I even created an incredible mess. Yeah. But God is still on his throne, established, firm. He is still good and a gracious God. And I can go to him. He's the only one that can make good come out of this mess. And part of that is, as you said a minute ago, is he's infinite. He is. That's right. And so he's always going to be there. Colossians 117 says this. He is before all things and in him. And here it is, all things hold together. So even when we blow it, mess things up, we create a mess. If we could remember to go back to him, our infinite God who holds all things together, he's the only one that can grow roses in a mud puddle, right? That's, that's the way I <laughs> right. like to describe Romans eight twenty eight. right? Yep. So how many times have we heard people misquote that verse and you know, all things work together for the good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And they take it that whatever happens, well, God says that was good. Yeah. But it can be a terrible tragedy. Oh, but God says that's good for me. No, that's not what he's meaning at all. But if we trust in an infinite God who holds all things together, he can make good come out of whatever we're facing. We saw that in Daniel. He did. You see it in Moses. We saw it in David. God is infinite. I think it pretty much goes uh, is, a, is a line uh, and a thread throughout the entire Bible. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like we see this over and over again, uh, where men and women of of faith that God chose to include in what we call the Bible, the Scriptures, mm-hmm. that they all overcame uh, some in, inexplicable things. Sometimes that were in their control, out of their control, things that were global, things that were local, things that were very personal. All these things. And in the end, they all came to the same conclusion, and that was, as you said, that God was fully in control. And they and they resolved that within themselves. And once they could do that, then whether however it turned out, whether good or bad, in their opinion, they were they could they could they could settle that in their own heart, right? Because God is the one that has this in His hands, right? And He is on the throne. Yeah, and with that, because He is on the throne and He has it in His hands, then we can trust His character. That's right. And one of the things we know about his character is he never changes. He never changes. Immutable. He never changes. I love James. I know you you really love to read and study <laughs> James. James, yep. James one seventeen. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So think about that for a moment. He doesn't shift like shadows. He's not changing. He's not like, well, he's a good, gracious God today, but tomorrow he's going to wake up in a bad yep, mood. Exactly. He is, he is constant. He is, he is always stable. And when he describes himself, like he did to Moses in Exodus chapter three, and then Exodus chapter 34, he describes his character. He is consistently that character. I, I just want to read Exodus 34. Mm-hmm. And it kind of gives us a big picture of view of him. God says, as he came down in the cloud and he stood there with Moses, he proclaimed his name to Moses, yeah. right? Yahweh, yep. self-existent, eternal God. He says this in verse 6, as the Lord passed by in front of him, he proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in faithful love and truth maintaining faithful love to a thousand generations, Mm -hmm. forgiving iniquity, rebellion, and sin. But he will not leave the guilty unpunished. He is holy. He is just. He's compassionate. And that's what we can trust. He is an infinite God who never changes. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's Because it's interesting we compare that to, uh, because as you're talking the whole time, I'm sitting there going back, you go all the way back to, uh, in, in the history of humankind, there have been some great, um, uh, like Alexander the Great, it was a po- was a powerful man who over who, who ruled the entire world mm. by the time he was thirty years old, right? Right. And uh, and then, but he was dead, you know. And yeah, so it so done. it was it was over, correct? And and then, but and here we are still talking about a God that show the consistency of his character and who he is. Is like here is all these thousands of years later. Yeah, we can still talk about Alexander the Great, right? But it's 
I mean, but it's talk to him about him in past tense. Exactly. But man, we're going to talk about God and his character and who he is. I mean, just like David and Moses and Solomon and Jonah and all these people refer to him over and over again in this, in these characteristics of him and, it, and, and who he was to them. It, crazy because if you think about it without us it, even if we I, I promise you even if i had never opened the book mm. I, there's some of the very words that they use to describe him would if, because if he was in me that would come out of my mouth that right. i would describe him in these ways right. because it's true right. and because it's because he, he's he, he's immutable it's, he has never changed and he will never change mm. and uh and so yeah i mean it's it's great to be have power on this earth but man it's 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 so it goes away right. i mean it does and it's like and whenever you look at God, we know that uh, uh, the power for Him is is different than power for us, mm-hmm. um, and He is He's all powerful mm-hmm. um, and yes, and omnipotent, right? Yes. Is the word I know we got a rope for down for Psalms thirty three six by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, their starry host by the breath of His mouth. At Psalm thirty three six, omnipotent it means to have what unlimited power. Unlimited. And he, we know. We know Alexander the Great, Nebuchadnezzar. These were men of lore, people that had great power. We can come up to now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Churchill, uh, 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 Eisenhower, all these, Patton, all these men of great power, right? They had great power. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lincoln, but they're gone. They're gone. And, and, and the power and the things that they did, there, there's some changes that happened because of them that had ripples, in, you know, because these were, you know, some of the icons of, 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 who, of humankind, right? But God's power is is unlimited, yeah. and it's to the point where I don't even know if we could even <clears throat> we can't measure it. It's right. unmeasurable, and it's and I know we try to describe it all the time, and we use all these these t- terms. And I'm from Arkansas, and he's from Kentucky, so <laughs> our terms are really poor sometimes. <laughs> but he is omnipotent, and that is and 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 that just simply means he is all powerful, and he's all powerful at all times. He is. Uh, Going with that, just quickly, Psalm 33, he goes on to say, and I love this because he's talking about this omnipotence, right? He says, the Lord looks down from heaven. He observes everyone. He gazes on all the inhabitants of the earth from his dwelling place. He forms the heart of them all. He considers their works. And then he goes into this. Just think about all of the great leaders Mm -hmm. who have come and gone, and yet God is still there. God in Psalm 33 says this, A king is not saved by a large army. A warrior is not rescued by his great strength. A horse is a false hope for safety. It provides no escape in his power. But look, the Lord keeps his eyes on those who fear him, those who depend on his faithful love. His eyes have seen all the generations of man, and he is still I got to say it. (laughs) He's still on the throne. He might be on the throne. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and to go along with that power and his, and his, his eye, his ever, you know, um, uh, ever present eye upon everything that's happening. And the crazy part about it is, is the fact that he doesn't only know what he can see. He also knows what he can't see. So he knows the thoughts we have right now. Right. And not just my thoughts or his thoughts. on the intents of the heart. Every Every thought of every human on the face of the earth, he knows every for every intent purpose. He knows why they do it, their heart behind it. So they yeah. could be somebody who has all the who on the surface does all these great things. But if their intent is bad, if their if their purpose, it. he knows. He, he knows, knows if it's all selfish gain. We can fool one another. We can't fool God. We can't. He's not only omnipotent. He's omniscient. That's right. He he knows all. He's all knowing. Uh, I love Isaiah forty six. Verse 9 and 10, God says, Remember the former things, those of long ago, I am God. So look back over history. I've been there, is what he's saying. I'm still God, and there's no other. I am God, and there's no one like me. There's no other God who can even uh, be compared to him, right? Then he goes on to say this, I make known the end from the beginning. Mm. From ancient times, what is still to come, I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. Mm. He sees the end from the beginning. And in the New Testament, we find in the Greek, we find a description of that as Alpha Alpha and Omega, Omega, the beginning and the end. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He knows how the end's going to come about. And if we could just come to that realization that our God is strong, he's stable, 
He's from eternity. He is time itself. He's immutable. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. Then whatever we face, yep. we could have so much more comfort and strength because we know no matter how things are going, and we don't see how it's going to come out in the end, but the Bible teaches us God knows how it's going to wrap up, and we can trust him in that. And a great picture of that is uh, is 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 the from the gospels where Jesus and his and his uh, his loyal followers of 12 were yeah. in, a, in a boat and they were 11 and uh 11 and uh <laughs> and so they were in this boat and it was storming yeah. and uh and they're and they're panicky right and uh, like we would be cuz the water just filling it up so their situation is just the, the, the things are sinking their boat. The, the situation's filling their boat, sinking is, their boat that's right. and they have little confidence Jesus though they look over there and like Dude, you're sleeping. You're asleep, man. <laughs> what is going on yeah. with you, right? Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that because I didn't know if you were going to talk about Alpha and Omega because I was here. Um, and uh, and Jesus is laying there, and he's and, he, and they, I guess they finally get him to wake up enough to look at him and go, "Dude, where's your faith? <laughs> where's your faith?" <laughs> it's like because he had that thing, and this is going to be a you know a funny expression, but this is one I've always used. He had Omega Vision. Right. right. He yeah. he knew what was going to happen That's in right. the end. Right. He That's knew right. what their what their mission was going to be. Right. And he had confidence that God had placed it in his heart that he was going to go and he was going to do the, the ministry that God had told him he was going to do. That right. he was going to minister to the people, the person that right. he said that he was going to. He knew that. He, yep. he God clearly spoke it to him. Wasn't and wasn't so going to stop it. So was going to stop it. He didn't know. If it, it could the sink could the boat sink and God still get him over there? Yeah. <laughs> but what whatever was going to happen. They were going to get over there, right, right? right? And so he slept. He went back and took a nap and <laughs> left the sweating up to his boys, right? But he had Omega Vision. I he sees the end, yes. right? Yes. So through all the chaos, you know, we see, uh, you know, I think we have a point A and then we have a point B. And I know sometimes we periodically make like subtracts, right? We'll right. make, it, we'll make we an A1, we an A3, detours. an A4. Uh, but <laughs> if we, uh, if in. we, but if we allow God and trust God, even in that, I believe God in his in his grace yeah. will always get us back to yeah. that place he always wanted That's us right. to. Now, his intent and his purpose and his will is for us to go here to here. Yeah. But if you want to go over there, which I know just I've been like, over there. Just like Peter did. Just like Peter the did. The night of his betrayal. That's right. It took a week for Peter to yeah. get back around, but he got there. God's grace uh, will allow you to go off your little path, and he'll sit there patiently and wait and go, all right, now you ready? Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Are you going to do what I ask you to do? And here you go. And guess what? You'll end up exactly where God intended for the entire time. Now, I know we can't physically see God. The disciples had that opportunity. They did. But you think about what he was teaching them there. If we truly trust that God is infinite, that God is all powerful and he's all knowing and he's got a plan, we shouldn't let ourselves get worked up until we see God worked up. Yep. There was Jesus lying in the boat resting, taking a good nap, <laughs> and they are all beside themselves and happen to wake him up. You know what? Heaven's not shaking today either. Mm -hmm. God is still on his throne, and we should be able to trust that, whatever's going on. Is that Take confidence in his authority. Everybody watching this right now, you could be going through anything in this life, mm -hmm. right? You could be going through, we don't know what all very people different. go through. Yeah. And, it could, and your boat could be very well taking on a lot of water. Right. Uh, but we, I guess for the, the message that we hoped you, you gained today was that Jesus is in that boat with you, right? And if you have trust Christ with your heart and your soul and you are what we call a born again believer, um, Jesus is in that boat with you right. and it may take on a lot of water. And in fact, it may even sink. I'm not right. going to tell you it won't sink, right? right? Cause right. life isn't always fair. It may sink, but the, the Bible and the picture of that it lays out is that if your faith is with him, he's going to get you to that, that next destination that yeah. he is a promise for you. Right. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he will fulfill that because he is with you and he will guard you and protect you because he is still, as you'd like to say, he's on still the on the throne. throne. Well, we hope <laughs> you enjoyed this, this little podcast, this little, uh, this teaching and our hope and our prayer is that you live a, a life fulfilled, that you live a life on point. We'll see you guys next time.